Welcome to Now Church. We are about to begin. Please take this opportunity to pull out your smartphone so you can like, share, and check in on our social media platforms, including Facebook, Twitter, and Instagram. And please use the hashtag Now Church. Thank you, and enjoy today's service. church you become the church but the church isn't the building the church is the vision the church is the people the church is the gathering it doesn't matter if we have stained glass or not we're not looking for religious symbolism we're looking for spiritual substance that's found only in Christ Jesus the substance is that we're giving a place for a gathering for his presence to come and connect with real people with real problems and situations on a real journey that just have a sincere heart to move along and get to know God better. That's what church life is about. We are now church, building a relevant, creative church, empowering people to reach others. Not just empowered for yourself, but empowered to go love somebody that was unlovable. It was unlovable. Have come onto this property, into this auditorium, and have experienced a life changing touch from God. But we believe that our best days are still ahead of us, not behind us. In order to keep doing that, though, you can't rest on what you've accomplished. is because we're not enthralled with our past as much as we are captivated by our future. Now church has never been stronger, more focused, more united around our common mission, vision, and values. By God's grace, we are healthy and we're poised for the future. The future. Good morning, church. Man, I love this season. I wonder if you could do me a favor and just give Jesus the biggest applause, the biggest praise, the biggest ovation. We love you, Jesus. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, God. And you know, um, it may be repeated again, but somebody sent me a quote recently, and it just said, we want to always be careful that we don't get so, um, we don't get so busy thinking about the way we do Christmas, and we forget the one we're doing it for. And I thought, boy, that's so true. And I'm just so grateful for every chance we get to come in and lift up the name of Jesus. Jesus, you're amazing. Jesus, we love you. Jesus, we exalt you. And we thank you for your presence, for your power, for access to you. And I just ask you today that whoever walked in this building or whoever might be watching by way of live stream, I just ask you to really touch hearts and lives during this time. And we honor you and we remind ourselves of why we do what we do. You are exalted. You are magnified. You are worthy. Now do me a favor. Give him one more big shout of praise. You ready? Come on. Come on. Whoa.
everybody grateful for his presence this morning? <laughs> I love you, Jesus. I love you. Well, you're the same God. You're never changing. You're never wavering. You're never fail. So we worship that God today. Oh.
just a few more moments, a few more moments, right here in His presence, right where You are, Jesus. That's where I wanna be. That's where I wanna be. Awesome, amen. Listen, we're, we're going to be praying over some things, but just thank God. We we're just thinking about all the uh, different uh, reports that we've had from different people that have received healing in this time. And just reminded of that as we're worshiping and believing, thanking God that, that Jesus, he heals our soul, yeah, but he also heals our body. And I'm reminded of a word that our pastor had said, taught, taught several times throughout the history of the church. He talked about, there's a word there in the Greek, sozo, and it means wholeness, that Jesus heals, sozo, he heals, but he heals body, soul, and spirit, like a wholeness all over. So sometimes we take a little bit, but we leave a little bit on the plate. We believe we're going to heaven, but listen, he still heals our body too our physical body. So we're believing for that today. Today we have uh, one of our missionary friends that we've been supporting for years, the Anasco family. And in fact, Dave is watching us right now from a hospital bed. He has asked for prayer because he is a, he is a young, healthy man. Amen. But he is dealing with just out of the blue. He's dealing with a diagnosis that uh, that there is an issue with his heart. And it was he was brought into needing emergency surgery coming up tomorrow morning. And so right now he's being prepared for that and asked us for our prayers. They, they've been serving in Asia for 20 years. And thank God that, that they're here at this moment happening to serve in the States now. And this came up now. So he's able to get some really good medical help quickly. But we're believing God. Listen, thank God for doctors, but we know Jesus is our healer. And we're gonna believe for that right now so shout outs to Dave he's watching us right now shout out to their family we're with you and also praying for a few of our other family members here in our church that we have heard about for healing they needed some healing and taking place in their body let's believe God and stand firmly on the word that he has said the promise he has given and let's believe for healing now father thank you that you have worked healing in your son Jesus Thank you, Jesus, that you chose not only to bear the burden of our sin, but to bear the burden of our sickness. And Lord, you took it upon yourself to bear it away from us. And you even said, Isaiah even prophesied that there would be a day where you would bear stripes on your back, punishment on you to bear away our sickness and disease and to heal us. And Lord, we stand on that promise that generational promise, that eternal promise that you are our healer. Lord, we lay claim to the promise you've already given us now. And Father, we pray for Dave, Lord, to be restored now in his heart in the name of Jesus. Heal, Lord, every situation in him in the name of Jesus. We believe you, Lord, to resolve every issue. Lord, we come against any kind of question or fear or even negative report. And Father, we pray that you would turn that around in the name of Jesus. And Lord, we pray for a healing right now. If you need healing right now and you're in the room, just believe God. Lay hands on yourself. And Lord, we pray in your name for your healing. We receive every promise. We don't leave anything on the table. Lord, heal us. Restore us. Heal our loved ones now. 
In Jesus' name. I sent my word. Jesus' name. And healed your disease. Mm. Come on, come on. I am the Lord, your healer. This is a song that came up out of my spirit. It's probably 25, maybe 30 years old. Lift up your hands. I'm going to sing on. this over you. I am the God that healeth thee. I am the Lord, your healer. And I sent my word and healed your disease. I am the Lord, your healer. That's for somebody lift some high last time. Hey, I am the God that healed. I am the Lord, your healer. Oh, and I sent my word and I healed your disease. And I am the Lord, your healer. Thank you, Jesus. Come on, let's just seal that with a hand clap of praise saying amen. Yes. Come on, it's good. Thank God, that's cool. Thank God, thank God. Hey, so we've got a lot of stuff happening here at Now Church. We've got a lot of stuff to fill you in on, but we're excited. We're glad that you're here with us during the Christmas season. So isn't it nice just to have a nice warm fire on the TV screen up here? and enjoying ourselves and just celebrating. We want to give a shout out for those that have helped during this week and just decorating this place. Isn't this beautiful? That's awesome. I always love it when they come in and decorate, do such a great job here. Fantastic. All right, I want you to turn around and tell somebody, I'm so glad you're here at Now Church today. And we'll get started in just a minute. Right. So we've got some really good stuff that is going to be happening at church, and we're excited already because I know one of the things that is going to be coming up soon, make sure that you're preparing for this. This is the 18th, Sunday 18th is going to be the big Christmas presentation. We're going to be announcing this and everything, but it's going to be at 6 o'clock that Sunday. So it's just a little, a little reminder to put that on your calendar. You don't want to miss it. Christmas, candlelight, communion, it's just going to be a beautiful time in worship. So uh, anyway, this week in the know, we've got a lot of stuff to let you know about what's going on with the Legacy Building. This last Sunday, we gathered together in the afternoon, and we had a team come in, and uh, this team, they were people that were with us the last church-wide prayer. When we gathered together church-wide prayer, we gave out tickets for a special uh, a moment, a special uh, afternoon uh, event where everyone came in from that prayer meeting, uh, and they were able to bring in scriptures and promises of the Word of God over the Legacy Building. We came in and we toured. You can get, open up that picture. Uh, we had uh, several different people coming through, and you see them writing scriptures in the wall voids there. Now, that's going to be behind drywall, but the Word of God is proclaimed, prayed for, written, and posted on the walls. Isn't that awesome? We just, we're starting Legacy Building in faith and so all of these different scriptures as i'm talking and, and it was a great time of everybody gathering together and just being in faith as pastor richard we were just talking about this last night pastor richard was saying you know we're building a building but we need to remember what it's for it's going to be a beautiful building aesthetically it's going to be beautiful but it's going to be for the sake of bringing in new families Many new people are going to be reached. Many children are going to be ministered to in these children's church uh, classrooms and everything and fellowship areas and, and coffee. Come on. It's going to be amazing. But, you know, it's going to be incredible just seeing people come to Jesus and utilizing this building to minister to him. So it is awesome. So we have that happening. Also, a few pictures right there of the drywall that is going up. This is going to be happening. It's happening now, happening, continuing for the next week, two weeks. So all of that's happening. It's all going to be put in. So now it's really taking shape. And also we have a few pictures of the AC going in. Had a big crane coming in and setting up AC units and everything interior. So it's really moving along. I just wanted to let everybody know what's happening with Legacy Building as you are 
are giving and supporting and making this happen. It's amazing. It's coming into shape. So let's go, let's give God another praise for this breakthrough. Awesome. We're really excited. We're really excited about what's taking place. So listen, if you're newer to Now Church, maybe this is a new experience for you and you're checking it out. We're glad that you're coming. We're even glad that you're coming in this season of construction and new things taking place. But listen, if you go by our Welcome Center on your way out, we have some gifts for you, brand new. People want to bless you and thank you for coming and making this part of your Sunday. And also want to challenge you to check out Now Church three weeks in a row. It's our three-week challenge. Check out Now Church three weeks in a row and see what God does. We throw out that every single time a challenge because we believe God is doing something fresh and he has something for you. Give him room in your life, especially in this Christmas season and see what he does in your life. Today, we're kicking off a new series for this month, and Pastor Richard is going to introduce it, and that he is going to deliver it. So let's give it up for our pastor. Thank you, Pastor Chris. It's good to see everybody today. We are big on the holidays around here, and so it's going to be a great month, and very excited about all that's going on. We begin a new series called Home for the Holidays, and I'll explain that more uh, in a minute, kind of where we're going for the month. But uh, let's open our Bibles. If you have your copy of God's inerrant, inspired, and infallible word, uh, please open it up, whether it's electronic or you bring, uh, uh, somebody said to me the other day, what's a Bible? You know, but what, what do you mean what's a Bible? You know, it's, uh, it, it's, it's, it's the, I still have to use my leather uh, Bible with, you know, pages, actual pages, because I've got it all marked up and I know where it is there. And then sometimes if I don't know the address in, the, uh, in, in online, I can look at it and find it in my Bible. Like, oh, it's, yeah, it's on the right side of the page. It's in yellow, you know? So make sure you, you stay familiar. It, keep sharp with your sword, amen? So we're going to Hebrews chapter 13 from the Amplified. We're going to Psalm 61 from a couple different translations here. Hebrews 13, 1 from the Amplified says this, let love for your fellow believers continue and be a fixed practice with you. Never let it fail. Do not forget or neglect or refuse to extend hospitality to strangers in the brotherhood, being friendly, cordial, and gracious, sharing the comforts of your home, and doing your part generously. For through it, some have entertained angels without knowing it. I'm going to weave in there Psalm 61 from verse one says, hear my cry, O God. Attend to my prayer. From the end of the earth, I will cry to you. For when my heart is overwhelmed, lead me to the rock that is higher than I. For you have been a shelter for me. You've been home turf, a strong tower from the enemy. I want to read it also from the Message Bible as a paraphrase. You've always given me breathing room a place to get away from it all, a lifetime pass to your safe house, an open invitation as your guest. My friends, the presence of Jesus is our safe house, our refuge. Let's pray together one more time. Father God, would you come and move in this place, in this people today, whether in this room or connecting with us online, we ask you to let your word reign and rule in our hearts change, challenge, and comfort us, strengthen us in your word, and grant us open eyes and open ears to understand it. In Jesus' name, amen. Amen. This month, we're talking about, talking about home for the holidays, but maybe not at all in the way that you think. We're going to be talking about your house, talking about the house of God. We're talking about family. We're talking about what is the difference between a house and a home. So it's going to be a great, great month, and I hope you'll bear with us on that and come with us on this journey. Um, you know, there's an old saying, home is where the heart is. And having been traveling uh, in a busy season with the Unstuck book the last few months, I have a really fresh perspective on simply being home. I've lived out of suitcases off and on since the second week of September. And uh, although it's, it's adventurous, it's not always fun. You know, travel used to be fun. 
It's not fun as much anymore. It's the, 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 the being there is fun. The going there is not fun, especially if you're flying or driving, paying the gas prices we're paying today. So you have all these things, these nuances going on, but I just have a simple thing, you know, just a simple appreciation sometimes for being at home, being, you know, put my feet up and relax. You know, being away, I found myself homesick, longing for home. But what is that? What do we really miss when we're homesick? It's not just the physical dwelling, is it? It's the atmosphere, right? It's the people. I mean, when thank the Lord, uh, three of my trips this fall, my wife has been with me, and that's been awesome. That was my number one thing I'm thankful for on Thanksgiving and when we shared around the table after the big meal is I'm just so thankful she's traveling again. She hasn't gotten to travel in a few years, hadn't been on an airplane in many years, and... Um, She's gone to me on three trips and, and done great, and, and we're just so thankful that she's well. And So that's my number one thing that I miss when I'm gone is her right there. Um, I get real sappy if I play uh, one, of my, uh, one of my playlists on my, on my iPhone is uh, 70s music. Uh, I, I used to call it bubblegum music. I used to laugh about it because I was into hard rock. But today, if you play Firefall or Ambrosia, some of you don't even know who those people are, but anyway, some of those groups, their love songs from the 70s, they play them in Yacht Rock stuff now. And, and I'm just telling you, I just start, I just start missing her even worse because we went through the late 70s together, you know. She was my girlfriend there uh, in 78 and 79. And so it's just an amazing thing to be able to kind of recognize what is, what is it? So I miss my family, I miss my kids, but I miss my grandkids, you know, after, after my wife and my kids, the grandkids, my kids feel it's, that the grandkids are before them now. <clears throat> so I just wanna make sure you know, that's not true. The grandkids would not exist unless we had allowed our children to live. <laughs> anyway. So, but think about it, in this day and age, we're talking about home and homesickness, it, it reminded me of all the new technology that I'm thankful for, but it still doesn't necessarily do it. Like, I mean, let's think about this. Um, texting, email, social media, worldwide phone service on your cell phone, voicemail, even FaceTime. When I go to Europe, it costs me 10 bucks a day, and I have unlimited talk and text. I remember when I first started traveling, after we started the church, one of my first trips was to Iceland. And I got to Iceland, I checked in the hotel, this had been about 1991. And I got into, this is before cell phones, before anybody had them. This is before I even had the one that I had in the bag, like in my car, like it was a big old contraption. So it was before that. And I went to Iceland, and I just miss my wife so bad getting there. It's just, you have to see, you know, you, I just want to tell you so much. So I called and talked to her for 11 minutes from the room. And then I came downstairs and said, I want to know how much the charges were. $111, $110. I was like, you got to be kidding me. What do I do? They said, well, you can buy this phone card from us and use it in the lobby right there and stick it in there and it'll, it'll, it'll tell you how much you're draining it. So I said, well, how much is that gonna be? They said, well, you ought to load it up with at least you know $20. And then so I'd go and I'd get this little message in there, oh, you, you have you, three minutes, you, have, you have only have three minutes left in my ear. And it's like, are you kidding me? So I'd get to talk to them, hey, how you doing? <laughs> One time in Russia, when the, when the Iron Curtain had fallen, I was in Russia and you had to go to like a Western Union thing and go to this booth and try to talk and you could, and I'm like, hello, are you, are you there? It sounded like I, it was shipped ashore or something. It was craziness. And even though now we have all these communication things, the point is it still doesn't satisfy 
my soul. FaceTime is great. It's better than it's better than anything we've had before. Seeing the person talking, but it's not the same as being there. Right? Why? I believe it's because we crave comfort. Home is where the comfort is. I tell my wife, wherever you are, that's home for me. Wherever you are, we can be on vacation, we can be wherever, and I'm home if you're with me because the love, the security, the familiarity, and home cooking. Home cooking is a big motivator for me, I'm sorry. There's something comforting in something we call hospitality. Hospitality. Sounds like a horrible word. It sounds like you're in the hospital. But that's not what it is. It's a word about making people feel at home when they're not at home. There's something comforting about that. Whether it's at a hotel, a theme park, a restaurant, or at church, we want people to sense that they are welcome guests. And the whole, there's a whole hospitality industry of people in those things that I just mentioned. We as a church, one of our big values in, in, in helping people to feel connected here is we really want people to have a sense we've been preparing for your visit and we're glad you came. Now you can't just say that on a sign and, and, and have it be genuine but I'm depending on you to communicate that fact when somebody comes in these doors that we're not an us for and no more club. We're not, a, we're, not a, we're not so tight that we don't have room for more people, more brothers and sisters, new people coming in that don't even know Jesus yet. And we're depending on you to convey the heart of the Father's house as people Get on this property, especially, listen, as Pastor Chris said, the new building, we've never had a lobby, folks. If you know our, our, our hallway here, we, we built that as a lobby. It holds like eight people. It's not a lobby. <clears throat> it's a hallway that connects people to bathrooms. That's what it is. So we've used outside. Outside has been... The, you know, the outdoor, when we had the big overhang there that you could drive a bus under, it's a, it's, it was a big space. But th let's face it, 80% of the year, it's too hot to stay out there. I, I visited with, with folks out there last week. In winter or in fall, in November, the week after Thanksgiving, last Sunday, I walked out there and it wasn't even, it wasn't even that the sun was hot. The humidity was so Bad. I walked back in the room, in, in the church, and my hair went. <laughs> I looked like the seventies. Speaking of the seventies music, and you know, it just it just crazy. So you know, so eighty percent of the year it was too hot or too humid, and then we had about fifteen percent of the year that was too cold, or windy, or rainy. And you just can't, you couldn't be out there for those. So basically, we had about three nice Sundays a year to have a lobby for 32 years, or at least the 26 years we've been in this building. My friends, coffee makes people feel at home sometimes. Well, even if you're not a coffee drinker, I hope you like the smell of coffee because it's gonna be over there. Hot chocolate and coffee, there's something something comforting about that. There's something homey about it. We're gonna, have, we're gonna have free coffee in the lobby. We're gonna have coffee brewing in that lobby space to draw people in. <laughs> Remember, I told you God is into coffee. You can tell because there's a book called Hebrews. <laughs> anyway, old joke. <clears throat> Listen, we need to send that message <clears throat> with our attitudes and our atmosphere in the presence of God. We're glad you're here and we've been expecting you. That's part of what we need to send and you have to be a part of that. It's a little tricky when it comes to comfort in the church 
Because it's God's house and you want people to be comfortable in a way, but not so comfortable they become disrespectful of our holy, majestic, and yet loving Heavenly Father. The Bible says the fear of the Lord is the beginning of wisdom. We need that reverential awe in God. And so it's a, there's a nuance there. It's a, it's, a, it's a challenge. And so what you need to know here as we talk about home and, and home for the holidays is that church should make people feel comfortably uncomfortable. Not so comfortable that you don't have conviction. Because where the Holy Spirit is, there's liberty and freedom, but there's also a, a conviction, a pinch, a, a sense of, hey, not everything is okay as you want it to be. Loving conviction without condemnation, instilling a sense of hope for change and growth through repentance. We don't want to add to people's burdens. Jesus said his yokes are easy and his burden is light, but there's still a yoke and a burden. He didn't say, I have no yoke, I have no burden. He said, look, mine is not like the world or like religion will put on you. It's easy and it's light, but it's still there. We need that conviction of the Holy Spirit. We need, we need God to deal with us because we're all human. We're all sinners saved by grace through faith and not, not of ourselves. But we need the dealings. I, I heard, I've heard people talk about, well, you know, I, I just get a little uncomfortable when you talk about sin. Duh. <laughs> That's kind of the point. Because we all mess up, don't we? we all, there's nobody perfect in the room. Maybe you are, but not me. We don't want to add to the burdens, but we also, one of the biggest concerns in this generation is that people want to be lulled to sleep spiritually, becoming stagnant in their precious faith. They, the, the, the Bible says there will come an, a time when people will heap up for themselves teachers, scratching their itching ears. We don't want to just get, we don't want to just be, listen, this is not a motivational speech. I hope you're motivated and inspired, but this is not a motivational speech. When you come to church, you hear the preaching of the word, and sometimes it's tough. Sometimes it's strong. Sometimes it's hard. Sometimes it's loud. Sometimes it's soft. God's love is a love that disciplines and holds. What I love about when I'm studying this, I'm looking at David always seemed to keep that balance in the Psalms where he longed to stay in his heavenly father's house and never leave. Psalm 27 verse four. One thing, David writes, one thing I have desired of the Lord, that will I seek. One thing, everybody say one thing. One thing I desire to the Lord, that will I seek, that I may dwell in the house of the Lord all the days of my life, to behold the beauty of the Lord, to inquire of his temple. For in the time of trouble, listen, he shall hide me in his pavilion. In the secret place of his tabernacle, he shall hide me. He shall set me high upon a rock. The message said this way, the only quiet, secure place in a noisy world is my father's house. Man, isn't that the truth? As the word says in our text from Psalm 61, when my heart is overwhelmed, lead me to the rock that is higher than I and I'll find my shelter from the enemy, my home. Think about this the other day. One of the most common words I've heard used the last couple of years throughout the pandemic, but even since, is the word overwhelmed. How you doing? I'm okay. I just feel overwhelmed. I feel overwhelmed. So, so what is it to be, <clears throat> pardon me, overwhelmed? The dictionary defines overwhelmed as this, to be buried inundated, overpowered, or carrying too heavy or too much responsibility. Overwhelmed in itself isn't necessarily a bad thing. There are moments we are overwhelmed with God's goodness or a breakthrough, a sudden flood of love, 
a sudden flood of joy or a moment of ecstatic celebration. We, get, we can be overwhelmed in the positive sense with something good that's happening. I was talking with a young lady with her little girl after church last week and the young lady was telling me her, her testimony and she started to cry a little bit and her little girl got in her mommy's arms and she was dabbing her mom's tears and I said, mommy's crying because she's happy, not because she's sad. She's telling me her testimony of the goodness of God. She's telling me, and the daughter thinks she's, she's crying because she's sad. That's what she thought. But there are tears of, there, there's an overwhelmed feeling we can get in the good things too. But many times in the negative sense, most often used, the, you know, the buzzword uh, in our society right now, right now, anxiety. Everybody's talking about anxiety. You can't go a week without seeing the posts of, especially in the next generation, using that term and just, I'm filled with anxiety. Well, the Bible says that perfect love casts out fear. And the word fear there, one of the words is anxiety. Perfect love, the agape of God, the love of God, the atmosphere of God's love is a, is a love that says, anxiety, go. You have no room here. And I would say this, overwhelmed to me is often a feeling you get just before you access more faith or more grace. Faith causes you to rise to the occasion and step into that new level, that new level of grace, that new level of breakthrough. The prophet Habakkuk expressed in the Old Testament by the way, you're being quiet again. Two weeks in a row, first service is quiet. What's wrong with you? You can't be on turkey tryptophan a week and a half later. Doesn't work. Please, if you're happy, tell your face. This is home. This is home. We can be real. We don't, we don't stand on ceremony. Uh, I, I left my robe at home today. I don't mean my bathrobe. I mean the preaching robe. Actually never had one. Never planned to. But in case you didn't notice, this is a place where we want the Spirit of the Lord to, to move in freedom. The, the song of the Lord is... Pastor Lindsay just began to sing that, that old song. I got news for you, by the way, Pat, PL, the song, uh, You Are the Lord, My Healer, is like 35 or 40 years old. It's a long way back. But when PL pulls on that and just flows in that, I got a text from Dave and Aska who we're praying for. He's in the hospital in Jacksonville. He said that song was the perfect song at this time. Amen. He, Dave, we love you. And what a huge blessing it is. <clears throat> Habakkuk, though, was going through a very dark time as a prophet of God. And his nation, Israel, was turning their hearts from God and running towards sin. Judgment was on the nation. And he prayed in verse 17 of Habakkuk chapter three, though the fig tree may not blossom, nor fruit be on the vines, through the labor, though the labor of the olive oil may fail and the fields yield no food, though the flock may be cut off from the fold and there be no herd in the stalls. So for a farmer or, a, 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 or someone that's got crops or herds or, or, or flocks, this is not a good time. Verse 18, yet, yet, yet I will rejoice in the Lord. I will joy in the God of my salvation. The Lord God is my strength. He will make my feet like deer's feet. The word is mountain deer. He will make my feet like mountain deer's feet. He will make me walk on my high hills. I have to say this right because from Ocala you say high heels. <clears throat> we walk in high places by faith, not by sight. See, in that moment, he said, the worst stuff is going on and I don't know where my next food for my next season is coming from because no crops are growing and no animals are out there yet. 
Here's what I choose. My friends, rejoicing is an act of the will, not an emotion. Habakkuk didn't write, and the fields yield no food, and the flock may be cut off from the fold, and there will be no herd in the stalls, and so I have anxiety. That's a given. He said, yet I will rejoice in the Lord. I will joy in the God of my salvation. And then verse 19 is the result. And the Lord God becomes my strength. I access that strength again. You choose to rejoice, then God's strength comes pouring in. His presence wraps around your exasperated soul. Honor God as your father, even when you're in trouble. And the Bible says he gives you mountain deer's feet that will never fall or falter. Their feet are secure, even on dangerous cliffs. My friends, in your father's house, you're a welcomed guest. Like adult children coming home for a holiday, frayed at the ends, and exhausted from their own responsibilities at work and with family, but in their parents' home, even for a couple of nights, they don't have to worry about stocking up the fridge or the pantry with groceries or resupplying the toilet paper or paying the electric bill. They're home. They're just glad to be home. Relaxed and peaceful. Confident that they will be taken care of. Trusting in their father and mother's love like we trust in our father in his agape, selfless, unconditional love. I read this the other day that the key to finding real peace from all your normal responsibilities of life First, resign as managing director of the universe. I love that. I, that's, I gotta write that down. You know, we used to say it this way. You know, here, here's the first revelations you need as a, as a believer. Number one, God is God. Number two, you are not. He that keeps Israel neither slumbers nor sleeps. Our God is on the job 24 hours a day. He's not, he, he's, he's not worried about you know, late payments on a foreign galaxy. He's not, he's not biting his nails. He's not worried about what's happening on earth. He's God and he's bigger than all and he's above it all. Stop trying to fix or control everyone and everything. That's when you get overwhelmed. When you're doing, when you're trying to carry stuff beyond your pay grade, beyond your station, beyond your calling, beyond your grace, resign as managing director of the universe. The psalmist writes, I'm not trying to rule the roost. I don't want to be king of the mountain. I haven't meddled where I have no business or fantasized grandiose plans. Psalm 131, verse one. Let's take comfort. I just, I wrote down this phrase. Let's take comfort in the familiar warmth of God's unchanging house. Make yourself at home in his presence. And to think about it, we have it much better than the psalmist of old because now Christ Jesus dwells within us. The comforts of home are now available to you and I everywhere we go in a way. John 14, 23, Jesus answered and said to him who asked him, if anyone loves me, he will keep my word and my father will love him and we will come to him and make our home with him or within him or her. Somebody said to me years ago, don't you realize you're God's address? If God was gonna get mail from the post office, he'd have to have it delivered at your house. 
Because you, listen, the Holy Spirit lives in you. Jesus lives in you by faith. You are God's address. He dwells in you. You are his dwelling place. He doesn't live in a house made with hands, made with bricks or mortar or made with steel. He dwells in this place because it's a gathering of his people and where two or three of his people are gathered together in his name. He's here in the midst of us in a manifested way. If you've given your heart to the Lord, Jesus lives inside you by the power of the Holy Spirit. Don't take it for granted. During these times, I would say it's time to come home for the holidays. To the reality of God's house in his family gathering called the church and to the reality of his presence and power working in and through your daily life where you live. Are you preparing him room in your house? Let heaven and nature sing. Are you letting him have rule? One thing I know, people come where they feel welcome. God comes where he feels welcome. He will not dwell where he's not wanted. That's why we celebrate him. My prayer this holiday season is that your life will go into a new gear, a new commitment, a new covenant, a new, a new desire to grow, to lean into God, to fellowship with him, and learn what it is to be at home in his presence. Let's pray. Father, thank you for your word today. We just give you glory and honor and praise. Lord, thank you that you would dwell in imperfect humans because of the perfect sacrifice of Jesus, your only begotten son. Lord, I pray for those hearing the sound of my voice today, wherever they are, that you'd bring home to them, that you would surround them with your comfort, that you would be that warm blanket. We think of a, when I think of a comforter, Father, I think of a comfort, I think of a warm, cozy blanket that surrounds me when I'm shivering, when I'm cold, when I'm in need. Lord, would you be that comforter, Holy Spirit, today? Would you be that comforter and bring that comfort around your sons and daughters? And would you bring that loving conviction for those who have pushed you away? I know it's the end of the service, but we welcome you, Holy Spirit. We welcome you at the beginning, we welcome you at the middle, and we welcome you at the end. We want you. We desire more of Jesus, more of our Heavenly Father's presence, more of that love, more of that strength. Lord, take the burden of all the responsibilities that so many of our people feel. Now, Lord, we pray for the, for the, especially for the ladies of our church and for the single parents in our church that carry that burden of Christmas and Christmas giving, Christmas presents and all the fixings of decorating the house and all the things going on. I just pray for a fresh grace that we would remember in the midst of all these things. It's not about all the lights and all the stuff and all the accoutrements of, of, of Christmas time, but it's about welcoming Jesus and celebrating the birth of the King. Lord, would you bring healing and wholeness to your people today? In Jesus' name. Just with your head bowed, your eyes closed for a moment. Maybe you don't know Jesus as Lord and Savior. Or maybe you have had a relationship with the Lord, but you know deep in your heart that you've been, you've been vexed recently or lately or the last couple weeks, months, or years. Life happens, and whatever it is, you get sidetracked 
from the purpose of God and the presence of God. It's time to come home. It's time to come home to his presence. It's time to simply recognize you're one prayer away from just that, that, that relationship with God being solidified again, being strengthened again. But you've got to make that next move. God has done everything. He sent his only begotten son to live for you, to die for you, to rise for you. If you're here today and you don't know Jesus, you can know him or Give him your life before you leave this door, before you walk out those doors in the back right there. You can know him. But you have to do something when you feel far away, and that is you have to respond to his wooing, his conviction, his loving correction, and say, Lord, I'm so sorry. Forgive me. Strengthen me. Wash me. Help me to live for you. Come into my heart. Change me from the inside out. If that's your prayer today, you can be born again, you can be saved, you can, you can be rededicated, recommit your life to him right now. In Jesus' name. In Jesus' name. Get back to the reality of his presence working through your life. Amen? Amen. Praise God. By the way, just real quick, a couple of people had, had mentioned it, and um, we've been really blessed this season with the, the book and everything else. I know some of you are tired of hearing about it, but I just want to go ahead and we're going to do the first, what we did the first day that we did the, the, re, the book release back in September, September 11th, we did the book release party, and we gave special crazy prices and stuff. We're gonna do those same prices again just for the next couple Sundays because several people had said they wanted to buy a few books together for Christmas gifts and stuff. And so please, uh, the, the back table, I'm not a good book salesman, but those of you that have read the book or have read about the book or many of you that started the book but didn't finish the book, um, it's, it's, it's worth reading. It's, it's a book to try to help people. And I believe it would help your demon-possessed neighbor. Anyway, so... <laughs> Anyway, so Merry Christmas. Anyway, so you can get that. Uh, before we go, we're going to receive our tithes and offerings. If you, the ushers are going to stand up right now. If you um, need an envelope for cash or check giving, we have those available. We have these I gave cards, which are available for people who give electronically. They say, look, I just want to, I want to participate when that basket comes by and do something as an act of faith when, it, when, it, when it's moving and not just have it pass by me. <clears throat> you know, we have a wonderful opportunity to finish this year strong in our giving. Um, I wanna remind you from summer, one of the prophetic words we had in July was that building season is battle season. Building season is battle season. Remember the book of Nehemiah. When we're under construction, there's a lot of stuff trying to slow us down and mess us up and that kind of thing. Thank God we were able to move forward this week, but we lost two weeks just on a few questions of the electrical wiring and stuff that we could have had it solved if we could have just gotten everybody together. They finally got together last Tuesday or Wednesday. That's why the drywall's going in because the wiring is finally done. So we lost about two weeks from that. Uh, there's a few things behind. We just need your prayers, need you to understand that we need to be um, just aware of these things. I, I, I read something recently, it was reminded, my, my wife shared me, something reminded me of something. Uh, Barbara Yoder, a, a mighty woman of God in Michigan, said the most intense moment of spiritual warfare is at the threshold of your breakthrough. At the threshold of your breakthrough. The most intense moment of uh, where, where there's spiritual pressure is right when you're about to go through the new door, right when you're about to go into that next season or into the completion of something or birth something new. And so I just want to remind you of that, that we got to be intentional in our giving, intentional in our prayer, intentional. Listen, the enemy would love to get us to back off just before completion of our task, finishing the legacy building and moving in. But I want to remind you, look, in the, in, in the last two weeks, we have increased our sowing of seed as a church. Again, not exponentially like we did during COVID, but we have increased our sowing and increased our giving to our missionaries. 
And in addition to our regular giving as a church, we've given extra to Jesus Way Youth Ranch as they started out up in Tennessee. Pastor Valeri Kuzmich in Kharkiv, I told you a couple weeks ago, to be praying that we, we were able to take care of one of those vehicles that he needs to get repaired to deliver food to people all, all over Kharkiv, Ukraine. I say Israel, I meant Ukraine. Ukraine. Our, Pastor Valeri in Kharkiv, Ukraine. And then our young missionary, Sydney Sievers, is out there on the mission field. We're able to do something for her this past week. Your giving keeps giving. And we want to thank you. Let's be purposeful in our tithes and offerings, giving intentionally to the vision of the Lord's house as we finish this year. And we want to say a big thank you to those of you who are so faithful with that. Let's pray one more time. Father, thank you for the opportunity that we have to help more and more people, to see more people saved, healed, delivered, and set free by your power and by your might. Lord, I thank you for what you're doing. Lord, help Pastor Valeria to get that vehicle repaired this week with what we sent last week. Help him to, to see the other vehicle get repaired as well with other people's help. Lord, we're just so grateful for what you've done this year to enable us to sow into so many valuable lives of people. I ask you to bless every gift and every giver and multiply the seed back to them exponentially in Jesus' name, amen. Amen, thank you so much. Amen. As you're giving, I just have a few announcements for you. For tonight, uh, we have our couples date night, uh, and that's going to be downtown. Uh, it's going to be a great time together. So that is for everyone that has already registered, so that registration is closed. But uh, for those of you that registered for the child care, for that, we need to let you know that the church will be open at 530 to drop off your kids. And they've, been that, they've asked me to say, please feed your kids before you drop them off because we will not provide dinner for them, but we're providing snacks for them. So just make sure that they arrive happy and, and full. And so anyway, uh, also uh, remember that downtown parking can be a little bit challenging right by the Marion Theater. So, uh, so if you can get down there early, that would be great. We'd love to see you down there. It's gonna be a great time. Um, churchwide prayer is gonna be happening this next sun, Saturday, Sunday, Sunday, I'm sorry. This next Sunday at 6 p.m. As you heard, there's so much that takes place during those times as we gather together for a churchwide prayer. It's awesome. And then thank you for your generosity with the Christmas project that we started this last week. Uh, as we said, first service, you guys, you rock. Second service rocks too because you let them still have a few hearts. <laughs> but all of you just being so generous, whenever we announce something, you guys just clear the table and going back there and sponsoring kids. So it's awesome. We just completely ran out second service and we were done. So that's fantastic. Thank you for generosity, being a generous church. And so with that, I am reminded, make sure reminding you that you need to bring in those gifts that you've gone, you've gone out and sponsored and picked up for the kids. That next week is the absolute deadline because we need to do all the packaging and work out all the delivery. So make sure that this, this coming Sunday at 11, a, or a, this coming Sunday, 11th, Make sure you bring in all of those gifts. And our holiday service schedule, I know it's a lot, but that is coming as well too. So remember for our special Sunday Christmas service presentation is happening on Sunday the 18th at 6 p.m. But we also are going to have uh, our holiday schedule for services. One service 11 o'clock on Christmas Day, one service 11 o'clock on New Year's Day. So just letting you know, if you have any questions, just go online and see the details. We also have that wall calendar outside in our huge foyer area. Haha, <laughs> after Pastor Richard talked about it, that little hallway right out of there. So anyway, so go ahead and stand up. We love all of you. Have a great week and we will see you. Thanks for joining us at Now Church. For the latest updates, visit us at nowchurch.com, including live or on-demand video, event registration, online giving, and much more. And don't forget to follow Now Church on our social media platforms, including Facebook, Twitter, and Instagram. And please use the hashtag NowChurch. Thank you.